And with those numbers I rolled, I'm doing history this week, specifically prehistory. Prehistory is traditionally understood as a time before writing and is one of the most controversial times of the historical debate. Stick with me to the end and I can help you understand why some aspects are so controversial and how to achieve intellectual peace concerning this. Remember what I said about how prehistory is a time before writing? It's very tricky even to say that definition. Writing is like character, symbols, and alphabets that contain meaning beyond their form. We would not traditionally think of artwork like painting or sculptures as writing, yet it's difficult to understand the line between a cave painting and writing. When does the image of a cave painting become abstract enough to transform, like a Chinese character or an Egyptian hieroglyph? Many cave paintings, like those found in Australia, are highly abstract. Some images could be considered a form of writing, a proto-writing system, a mix of iconography and hieroglyphs. This is one of the thousands of historical arguments about how humans came to be, how humans formed, and how civilizations first rose. Google how many missing links have been found throughout history, and it's utterly terrifying. As an author, botanist, historian, and gamer, biogeography naturally appeals to me. I also teach college-level courses. One of my future courses is biogeography. Combining life with the land and watching how things change over time really excites me. While compiling my notes that will eventually become the critical aspects for my lectures, I noticed that the undisputed facts, quote-unquote, were mildly minimally debated in the Renaissance, medieval, classical, and ancient history periods of human history. Generally speaking, people have to get into college courses, aiming for their masters or PhD to really get into many of these arguments. Modern history and prehistory are the two historical periods that generally receive the most criticism, and these debates happen at the level of the general public. If you want to get a textbook for your class, it's a nightmare. The average textbook for biogeography can take two to five years to develop. Every year, discoveries often upturn or modify what we already know. Even if everything goes right, and one can make a textbook in two years, it's already out of date before it even gets published. The prehistory and modern history slash current events are the most likely to change. For this video, I'll be focusing on ancient history, not so much modern history. The first big reason why history is controversial is its temporal position. Many historians gather material like artifacts, fossils, soil layers, diaries, tax forms, and more to gather data and make conclusions based on that info. It's like trying to assemble a puzzle piece of a thousand pieces. At least 20% of the pieces are going to be destroyed or forgotten by time. With Roman history, there are so many artifacts that you can reasonably infer what's in the gaps. Prehistory is like a time before writing. It's a time where, if humans lived then, there are far fewer artifacts of their life. The fragments of ancient, classical, medieval, renaissance, and early modern people leave behind, well, they last longer and maintain their integrity. Bronze, iron, and steel all last longer than bone or wood. Stone tools break down easier, more likely to be lost to time. We have more reason to doubt our understanding of the most forgotten past than any other part of history. How confident would you describe the complete picture of a thousand puzzle piece with a dog eating a few, your friends losing a few, a few more getting thrown away accidentally, and you only have 13 of the thousand left? The second big reason I would classify as theoretical standards. What is a human at their base level? Stripped of civilization, what exactly is a human capable of? So let me tell you a story. It's the 1950s. Many Western scientists and historians thought that humans were naturally good and evolved from chimpanzees. Because humans were naturally good, this also meant that chimpanzees also had to be naturally good as well. Now imagine Jane Goodall is presenting her research on chimps, suggesting that many traits that humans have, chimps also have. She and her fellow researchers were disturbed. Chimps can be kind to themselves, their family, and some strangers. However, chimps can be brutal, killing family, strangers, and exhibit behavior implying that they enjoy inflicting suffering on others. When this evidence came out, people hated it. Those that believed that humans came from chimps and were naturally good experienced a cognitive dissonance. 
They either had to believe that humans did not come from monkeys, or they had to believe that humans had a natural streak of evil. By the 1970s, most people changed their minds in the scientific community, thinking that chimps are capable of evil, and we inherited that, evolving from chimps. Some even became more religious, seeing a need for a higher good for humanity. I ask again, what makes a standard-based human? Our political and theological assumptions are often justified by saying, this is what humans were like back then. If you start changing prehistory humans, you start changing the theoretical standard of what a human actually is. Okay, so how does one avoid the controversies in prehistory? I'll tell you what I'm doing for my class and what anyone can do. First, limits on your artifacts. I won't try to speculate with artifacts, only estimate. If I have a piece of fossilized conifer pollen, and it's large and healthy looking, I can easily estimate what family of plants it came from. I can estimate that the tree was healthy. I have to speculate on what the tree had for genes or what genes the pollen grain could have passed on. Once someone finds cedars in the fossil record, their pollen shape is rather similar to the cedar pollen grains of the modern day. People can cross-reference fossils for what is still around to expand their understanding. However, two cedar trees of the same species may have slightly different genetic traits. A single tulip species can hold so much variety in gene expression that one tulip can make over a hundred varieties. Sure, we can find conifer pollen but we don't know what those trees looked like in detail, and we don't know what genes were expressed, and we don't know specific regional traits. The first way to avoid controversy is to stick with what you can know for sure. The second thing is not avoidance of theoretical standards, as many would suggest at this point, but consequence cycles. Rather than getting someone to be less of a doomer or optimist, change beliefs, ask what and why. Based on our artifacts, what do you believe about humanity? What do you think is the correct answer? If everyone is born with some evil, does that change how you treat your parents or children? If everyone has a little good inside, does that change how you work with your really annoying boss? If humanity needs to survive in groups, what does that say about introverted tendencies? Let's expand this further. If introversion makes people live in situations where it's harder, does that mean that extroversion is a higher moral virtue for humans? Is it natural to think that, given enough time, extroverted people will clump together and eventually form larger and larger groups that eventually become a civilization? Is civilization inevitable? The goal is not to change their mind or yours. The goal is to consider whether you are willing to accept the consequences of your actions played out across time and space. For my students, I will point out that there are different conclusions and the consequences of what they hold is accurate. They decide to believe, and I hope that with my instruction, they will decide things and make choices that they won't regret. I'm gonna be perhaps more honest than I should. I'm really tired and fairly exhausted. I've taken up a new job and it's kinda hard to do a lot of the things that I wanna do. I'm going to try to make it work, but I may have to reconsider what I'm doing for this spring uh, season of videos that I'm making to promote my work. And if you really like my work, please subscribe to my subscribe star at JJ Bartel. Let me know what your thoughts are on all of this that I've presented. Well, until next time, let's cultivate some greatness.